All right, good morning, everyone, and thanks for taking the time to, to come over and spend a little time learning about what we're doing on the Earthquake Early Warning Program. Um, so, so let me start off by saying that uh, this really is a monumental day for us because over the last several years, the Earthquake Early Warning System has really taken several steps forward to become realization. Now, keep in mind that um, you've seen on the news in the past the technology that's been developed, the capability to actually sense that early energy that gets emitted by an earthquake uh, at the hypocenter, uh, to be able to, technology to be able to uh, sense the, the, the time that that energy gets released uh, before the shaking occurs, and take that, that, that time and be able to put that into a warning. It's very, very significant. But it, the, the whole piece of building a resilient, reliable, and sustainable earthquake early warning system for California is more than just the technology. It's more than just the ability to sense the wave. It's the, it, it's the requirement of taking that, that information and moving it through our telecommunications pipelines it with such speed and accuracy that we get that information out to all of our 18 critical infrastructure sectors to all of the public of California, to the visitors of California, in a, in a timely enough way that they can take action. And if it's, if it's at such a time where they don't have the immediate, because they're very close to the epicenter of an earthquake, to take immediate action, the, the ability to automate action, particularly in our critical infrastructure, um, our power, our water, um, um, and other kinds of uh, systems, or to put alerts and, and uh, uh, audible uh, announcements in our hospitals and in our schools so that um, uh, certain actions can take place to ultimately not just protect infrastructure and buy down the impact of a disaster uh, like an earthquake, but to ultimately save lives. And so we're very, very excited today because um, uh, uh, the governor signed Senate Bill 438, which was authored by Senator Jerry Hill, who's with us today, and you'll hear from him in a minute, uh, a great partner. And uh, um, he's carrying on from work that uh, uh, now Secretary of State Alex Padilla, pre previously the, uh, the state uh, senator uh, Alex Padilla introduced uh, Senate bill uh, uh, that allowed us to begin that process of uh, starting the earthquake early warning program. And then today the governor signed that bill in the, uh, um, into uh, law that basically establishes the governance structure that will organize and facilitate in a comprehensive and coordinated way the rollout uh, of the earthquake early warning system. And remember that California, very long state, very the topography, the complexity, the population really requires us to be able to be able to move that signal uh, throughout the state uh, in in, a, in the speed and timely way. Uh, and so those are those challenges that we're working through. It also removes the restriction on the general fund monetary sources for the system. Uh, when available, that we could uh, also be able to uh, leverage uh, uh, general fund dollars. Uh, but, but truly, this is a public-private partnership, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a partnership that will be in the long term funded by both public and private entities. And it, and it requires various reporting requirements on the progress uh, of the system implementation to the legislature. So there's checks and balances working with our legislative um, uh, folks. Uh, additionally, additionally, this year, state budget included uh, uh, $10 million by, um, uh, um, by the governor uh, for the project. The, the funding is a significant startup, helps us to, to sort of get the program um, fully moving forward. Uh, this is in, in addition to some federal dollars that were made available by Congress to the USGS. Uh, and the idea is, is to working, work together to uh, enhance the sensor arrays uh, uh, the, the sensors that are needed to be put in the ground so that we've got uh, enough sensors placed in the right locations so that we're getting the most uh, uh, reliable information uh, on, the, uh, on the earthquakes that occur. And you'll see here there's a lot of um, um, charts and graphs that will describe what those sensors look like, and you'll hear a little bit more about that today from uh, our folks from the, um, from the universities and um, from the USGS. Uh, the governor's structure itself uh, is really uh, established as a key item uh, and, uh, and really what we see as a major success in being able to 
make sure that we are all on the same page moving forward. I, don't, I think the public uh, and our industry and business absolutely see a value in having earthquake early warning. Um, we, we recently partnered with the California Seismic Safety Commission to do a study uh, on, um, on uh, looking at the, the, the benefits and how, how the benefits of the system can imp, imp, impact each of the various sectors, and the information we got back was very, very positive. So we know that there's an interest, but we also know that the public and uh, industry wants it to be done in a very coordinated and a very systematic way. And so the governance structure today that the governor signed in place, Senator Hill's bill, uh, helps to establish that, uh, that process. Um, in addition, this morning, uh, myself and the governor had an opportunity to meet with representatives of the major utilities in California. Utilities are a great partner with us in this process. Uh, when you think about uh, the ability to um, uh, automate the uh, interruption or shutdown of power, water, fuel, um, you know, in case of gas, you get less gas fires. In the case of power, uh, the ability to get the power up and operational again much faster, much more rapidly. Uh, these are all benefits. So the utilities are a great partner with us uh, throughout California and, um, and, and will will be working very closely with us in the governance structure. Um, we're also working very closely, of course, with our university system partners uh, throughout California, um, Berkeley and uh, Caltech, uh, USGS, uh, the California Geologic Survey, um, uh, Stanford, and others that um, uh, UC San Diego that are par partners with us as we move forward, and our federal partners at FEMA, um, and again, the USGS that are working on this system. So it's really an all hands on deck, one team, one fight effort to move forward with, with this, um, this new, new system. Now, in reality, it's not a turnkey. We're not going to turn the key tomorrow and you're going to get early warnings. This is a process now by which we are uh, uh, officially rolling out the implementation plan that we have created collectively uh, that will include uh, um, milestones in being able to uh, uh, build out the sensor array, maximize the pilot projects that have been going on in Southern and Northern California, um, and uh, working with the uh, key, some of the key infrastructure sectors that I've already mentioned, but also like the transportation industry. Today you'll, you'll hear from our, our partners at BART, uh, High Speed Rail Authority and others, ports, maritime, all of these uh, will be uh, uh, areas where we will will maximize the work that we've already been doing with them as we move forward. And so um, uh, those those initiatives will go into higher gear, I guess you could say. And in reality, you'll see the ability to get these warnings probably, hopefully, within the next year to two years in, in reality. And so um, uh, it'll be probably be based upon regional rollout. And, um, uh, and, and again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to leverage and maximize the existing pilot projects. Uh, but uh, a big piece of this comes with a public education uh, and training piece. Because once you get the notice, what does it mean? What do you do with that notice? And so it's important that the public understands how important this is. But once you get that early warning, these are, these are not warnings you're going to get all the time. We don't, you know, it's not going to be for every magnitude uh, 2 earthquake. These are going to be for earthquakes of significance um, that are going to result in enough shaking, and, and you're going to be getting those um, uh, warnings that come out. What do you do when you get those warnings? So part of this ties in with that uh, education piece. And collectively, all the organizations you see up here uh, and, 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 and all our partners will be working on that public education piece uh, together. So um, uh, I want to thank all the partners. I want to thank, uh, of course, uh, Senator Hill and, and the governor for uh, moving this forward. Um, this is an important milestone uh, step forward and um, very excited about it. And this is really something that, you know, we are getting to the place where California will have this system. In the next five to 10 years, technology continues to improve. This will only get better. It will only become more sophisticated um, and it will become a secondary way of life here in California as, as we move forward. This is earthquake country. And beyond all this great capability, it still does not negate the fact that every one of us needs to have a plan, um, be prepared for earthquakes, know you live in earthquake country, and if you do, get earthquake insurance and, and, and understand what to do when an earthquake occurs. This is just another tool uh, that will be very helpful for you. So with that, 
Um, let me introduce the uh, next set of speakers. Um, following myself will be Senator Jerry Hill, again, a good partner, and, and uh, great to work with him on this. Um, and he will talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the actual bill that was signed today. Senator Hill. Thank you, Director. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you very much. For, what an honor it is to be here today. I, I, it's, this is one of those milestone days, because as someone who was born and raised in, in San Francisco and live in the peninsula now, I've uh, lived through my share of, uh, of major earthquakes over that time, and uh, a lot of shaking has gone on in that area, as well as in the rest of, of California. The good thing about today is we're, unlike Japan, unlike Mexico City, we don't have to lose 9,000 or 5,000 people and then implement an early warning system. We're doing that before, and hopefully we can get that operational in the next year or two before that big one hits. So it's wonderful to see a partnership, and that's exactly what this is today. I mean, it is a true partnership to get this much-needed system up and running. It's a partnership that takes legislative support, scientific expertise, Emergency preparedness, leadership, and Director Gil Gilarducci has been an outstanding, outstanding leader in this. Someone who has the perspective, the foresight, the, the leadership abilities to bring this together. So thank you very much, Director. It's been a pleasure working with you. We achieved two major goals, legislative accomplishments this year. We've secured, we've secured $10 million from the early war for the early warning system in the 2016-2017 budget. We've made it possible to establish the Earthquake Early Warning Advisory Board to support the development of the statewide earthquake warning system. The board will be made up of the governor's uh, cabinet secretaries, private industry partners, and local governments, and will oversee the sustainable implementation of California's earthquake early warning system. The board will help coordinate all stakeholders and will help oversee system operations, research and development, finance and investment, and public training and education. The early warning system is incredibly important, as we'll soon see, because it's not a matter of if, as we know, it's just a matter of when that next big quake will occur. Uh, the, the part that I think is important, as we all know, in the Northridge quake in Southern California, with a magnitude of 6.7, the 1989 Loma Prieta quake that, that struck the Bay Area with a 6.9, and 63 people lost their lives in the Loma Prieta quake. 3,757 people were injured. Thousands were displaced from their homes, and the region suffered an estimated $6 billion in property damage. Uh, and it's critical that with the 27th anniversary of the Loma Prieta shake, uh, this war warning system would have saved lives then for sure. And as, as uh, Director Gilarducci said, it mentioned it will detect that shaking if it occurs and send that urgent alert before the shaking happens, before it spreads and gets to the point where you're at. Think of the possibilities. I always think of that ophthalmologist, if I'm getting a, a eye surgery, that ophthalmologist that has that laser in my eye, that he'll be able to take that out before that shaking starts or that fire station where the doors can come up before the shaking hits so we make sure they come up so the trucks and engines can get out. There's little things, the BART trains that can stop, the CAL train that can stop, the manufacturing equipment that can stop. All of these things are phenomenal. And if just for someone to be able to duck and cover, because as we know, half of the injuries, half of the cost and the lives are because people are in the wrong place when that shaking begins. So this is critically important, and just a few seconds can prevent devastating and life-threatening injuries. So I'm honored to be here today, honored with our partners from the universities, from public transportation, the private sector, our utilities, who are playing a major role, have been, and will continue to be, and others who are working together to implement this. And, and again, much thanks to Director Gilarducci and the staff of Cal OES for spearheading this project and for working every day with public safety agencies throughout California to keep us safe. And also a thank you to, uh, to my colleagues in the legislature who felt that this was an important consideration, assembly member. It's amazing, it, it's really important that uh, we were able to, to bring this together. And assembly member Gray, who's here today, was a strong partner in this, in the assembly as we were able to move it forward. 
Uh, a sincere thanks also to uh, everyone who's been involved uh, in this, the process, more importantly, and especially the private sector, who have now had the opportunity with state contribution in our state. It shows that we're serious. I think the $10 million shows that we're serious. We have a commitment. We're making a commitment. And now we want everyone to come together to put the final pieces together. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you to the governor who saw the wisdom today to sign the legislation and uh, felt that this is an important next step for the safety of all Californians. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Mark. Appreciate it. Okay, great. And so put on our Senate side. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Assembly Member Adam Gray and He'll kind of give a few words on the assembly side. Good morning. Um, you know, in my capacity as the chairman of the Governmental Organization Committee in the Assembly, uh, I had the uh, opportunity and honor this year uh, to work with Senator Hill, with Director Gilducci, with uh, Cal OES to advance uh, an earthquake early warning system, both in funding and the budget, as you've heard, uh, as well as the governance infrastructure. Uh, California's major earthquakes left an early impression on my life uh, as a 12-year-old attending my first World Series game in uh, San Francisco. And I saw firsthand at that time the uh, fear uh, and certainly the, the chaos that can occur uh, at, from the damages of such, such severe earthquakes. And so the extent to which you know, California can lead in this area, uh, we have the most innovative, cutting-edge public and private sector uh, here in California. We have some of the best universities in the world. Um, as the Senator said, California wanted to make a statement this year, uh, both uh, by putting our money where our mouth is, with a major investment uh, in this, and as, as well as setting the stage for working with our public and private partners to make this a reality uh, here in California. I want to thank Director Gilducci, uh, Senator Hill, uh, certainly the Governor, and I look forward to working in my capacity and lending my hand uh, to making this a success going forward. Thank you so much. All right, great. Thank you very much. Um, next from Caltech. Do we have a representative here from Caltech? No, okay. John McParland, who's the director of the Bay Area Rapid Transit District. So, director? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I thought that I would be following the scientist uh, because I'm kind of sandwiched between, uh, with Bart, between the science and the emergency operations. And basically what it amounts to is that Bart has been working in conjunction with Cal since 2012. We already have earthquake early warning. We have a system that's in place. So how does this mechanism work? Well, first of all, we had to do our homework by virtue of the fact of uh, uh, investing almost a billion dollars in making sure that our system will be viable after the earthquake strikes. But the big problem that we end up having is the potential injuries or deaths that would occur if we ended up having derailments. And at the peak of the commute, we have 64 trains running. A lot of them are 10 car trains. 1,500 people uh, within a 10-car train. Imagine a derailment that would occur that potentially would uh, injure or kill many of those individuals. And the biggest factors for being able to uh, predict earthquake derailments, and there are many of them, but the two biggest dogs in that fight are going to be the speed of the train, number one, and the magnitude. I can't do anything about the magnitude, but I have all complete control if I have early warning. Because many of those, as a matter of fact, about 40 of those 64 trains are going to be traveling about 70 miles an hour. If I have 20 seconds of warning, I can reduce that down to 10 miles an hour. That is huge from the standpoint of having a viable system, not only for preventing the injuries and uh, potential deaths, but that billions of dollars that we ended up spending for the retrofit are of no use if I have derailed trains. When we have a partial or a complete collapse of the entire infrastructure and we need to be able to get resources in and we need to be able to evacuate people out, 
when that infrastructure has been compromised and BART is still viable, I can carry 1,500, 1,000 to 1,500 people per train out. We do it every day. That's the advantage of the early earthquake warning that we end up having implemented right now. And I just happen to be sandwiched between the science that ended up providing me with the tool and the emergency services that ends up connecting with that to provide those resources in and the leadership and the organizational structure so that we can end up getting that job done. Uh, and I'm just, like I said, I am fortunate to be in the right place at the right time to help facilitate that process. Thank you. Okay, then lastly, uh, Doug Given, who is the early earthquake warning coordinator at the United States Geologic Survey. I'm the first earthquake early warning coordinator that the USGS has appointed, and hopefully not the last, because this capability is going to have to work forever to protect the, system, uh, the citizens of, of California. Um, it's the goal of the USGS, uh, particularly our earthquake program, to reduce the impacts of earthquakes to all citizens of the United States. Uh, and most of the risk in the United States is centered in California. So California is first, and thankfully, they're leading the way in making earthquake early warning a reality. Uh, it's the goal of the USGS to do it not only in California, but also in Oregon and Washington. And this is a very important opportunity to show other states how a state can partner with federal agencies and universities to make this a reality. The system is built on top of the seismic networks that are already operating in California, the California Integrated Seismic Network. And we've demonstrated in that collaboration the importance and the utility of those partnerships in operating seismic alert systems for the long haul. And so that is going to be how the Shake Alert Earthquake Early Warning System persists through uh, the decades to come, uh, presuming, of course, that we get the funding to continue to do that. So I can't emphasize enough the need for the collaborations and the partnerships, not only between universities, the state, and the federal agencies involved, but also the private sector. Um, it's clear that implementation of early warning, effective use of early warning, effective education for early warning is all dependent on those who will ultimately use it and benefit from it. I was at a meeting just yesterday at Berkeley with users who were telling us what they need and how they can use it. I was on a phone call this morning with a mass notification company who wants to be one of the early pilot adopters to use this information to improve their products to their clients and protect their clients as is part of their business. So this is an extremely important milestone, a real, um, real thing I'm going to remember in my uh, career as uh, the early warning coordinator. And uh, I'm sure that uh, collectively we will all continue to work to protect the lives and property of the citizens of California and to improve the resilience of our society. Thank you. And I also wanted to have uh, Peggy, Dr. Peggy Helwig, to come up from UC Berkeley uh, to talk about the, the Berkeley program. Peggy. Thank you very much. I'm here as operations manager of the Berkeley Seismological Laboratory. And I'm one of a team who's been working since 2006 with our colleagues at Caltech and the US Geological Survey to reach this day. UC Berkeley has played a critical role in the creation of ShakeAlert, the earthquake early warning system that we are now embarking on implementing fully in California. It's, we've, the, the work that we've been doing together with Cal OES and with our partners have, has brought us to the threshold today of a statewide system. Our journey so far has been sp supported by funding from the state, from the federal government, and from private partners especially the Moore Foundation, which gave us a big kick in the middle of the effort. We have a strong tradition at UC Berkeley of world-class work in seismology. We operated the first network in the Western Hemisphere in the mid-1800s and contributed to the report of the 1906 earthquake. We had the leadership of the report for the 1906 earthquake. We want to continue our leadership with this earthquake early warning system that we will help put together for the state. Thank you.
Okay, so you can see that there's been a lot of work that's been done on this. Um, and there are many more people that we could have up here talking about their engagement. This has been truly um, an all hands on deck effort. And all of the work you heard going back to the 1906 earthquake, this is phenomenal, but the technology, the capability, the innovation that exists here in California with our university systems, with our partners, the federal government, is unlike any other place. And, 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 and you know, we, we do learn from uh, what happens in places like Japan and Mexico and other places that have earthquakes, and we share information. Um, but, but I'm just so really deeply appreciative of all the work that everyone's done, and I'm very appreciative of the fact that we're all working together uh, to get this, this in place for the, the good of the state of California. Um, the real work now begins. You know, we've got all the governance, we've got funding identified, we've got all the players in line, we've got pilot projects, we've got work that's been done individually and collectively. Now the heavy work begins to pull this all together and get it rolled out so that we can say here in the coming year or so that we're fully, fully operational and you all can be receiving earthquake early warnings. So with that, don't turn it back to you or answer any questions. Uh, if anybody would like to see an example. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, you might want to point your cameras right here. Is there a link for it? There will be, yeah. Yep. So this is uh, roughly 50 seconds. We don't need to play the whole thing. I'll play it about halfway through. It's pretty loud, so if you're uh, easily disrupted by loud noises. <laughs> So you can see if, if um, just having that out and, you know, he's driving down the road and all of a sudden that goes off on your cell phone, you don't know what, the, what that means, it can be a little disconcerting. So there's a lot to, that, that not just getting that signal out, but what does it mean when that signal goes out? And how does that signal get tied into um, our critical infrastructure sectors, power, water, fuel, our transportation networks, et cetera, to be able to automatically either do shutoffs, slowdowns, Put, put systems into uh, safe modes uh, so that they protect the system, first of all, but and also how, how do employees, uh, our, our greatest resource, our workforce, get that information and what do they do to protect themselves? Ultimately, we want after the quake hits and the shaking stops that we want our, we want our, our, our citizens uh, to bounce back, to, to survive, but we also want our businesses to recover rapidly. Uh, and by, by implementing this, we, we, we honestly believe that it will, will help in that overall endeavor, getting our systems back in, in place and operational much faster if we don't have it. So with that, I'd be happy to open up the um, floor for any questions and for any other group that's here. So how much advanced notification will people actually get once this system is operational? Um, I guess if I interpret the question is when, when, when are they going to know, I mean, when the system is ready to go? 15 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute and a half, how much time? Gotcha. So it depends on where they are. Let's have Doug, you want to yeah. talk about that? Come over here. The podium. So the goal of the system is to detect an earthquake as rapidly as possible and to discriminate between a small earthquake and a large earthquake to know whether an alert is warranted or not. Um, the system can do that now in, in about four seconds or so. It depends on station density, which is one of the things that we're working on now, is to build out a sufficient number of stations to make sure stations are close to any earthquake that should happen to occur. That's critical to making the system fast. Um, but to, directly to your question, the answer is it depends on where you are. 
uh, the system will behave as rapidly as it can. The alerts will go out over various media, so there'll be some delay in delivery of the message to you. Uh, all that will consume part of the uh, alert time, but uh, your distance away is going to determine how much time before the strong shaking reaches you. Um, so in general terms, all we can say is you'll get somewhere uh, from no warning in the worst case to seconds to tens of seconds, and in the case of very large earthquakes, like an extremely large southern San Andreas, northern San Andreas, or even the Cascadia offshore event, minutes of warning is actually possible. And how will the notifications go out? Cell phone alerts, or what's the process? Um, our intent is to use every available means. Uh, so it will come out in many different ways. Uh, most folks assume it will come to your cell phone, and there are systems like the Amber Alert system on cell phones, but unfortunately the way that was designed, it's too slow for earthquake early warning. It consumes too much of that warning time. And so we're actively working with uh, both FEMA through uh, their IPAWS WIA system, which delivers those alerts, uh, the AMBER alerts. And we're also working directly with the cell carriers to speed that up. In fact, just two days ago, there was a report released by the FCC about what it will take to speed up that public alerting system to under three second delivery. And what other means might there be though besides cell phones? Um, how do you get the word out? Okay. I don't want to hog the thing, but I'll... <laughs> uh, uh, other things are, of course, the Internet. Uh, that would be very fast. It's great for mass notification, but as you can all imagine, it might not be that reliable during heavy shaking, particularly in the aftershocks uh, after heavy shaking has potentially impacted the system. Um, there are technologies available besides that, like broadcast radio. Uh, so we're actually working with a partner to do that uh, technological piece where the data is actually carried over the digital portion of the radio frequency spectrum. It's also possible to do it over satellite. You get radio over satellite, so you can also get warnings over satellite. Uh, but it's going to take some technology work with these partners to accomplish all of these things because these systems were primarily set up uh, with a more leisurely pace. And so it all has to get sped up for earthquake early warning. Let me just, let me just one thing. Um, so just a, a couple of things. California OES manages the statewide uh, telecommunications and public safety uh, backbone. Uh, that includes uh, land mobile radio capabilities. It includes microwave. It includes satellite. We've got all these systems in place that we use currently for public safety communications. We are also working very closely with the federal government on a broadbanding initiative to have a spectrum 100% dedicated to public safety communications. Uh, we've been talking with our partners at the UC and, and others on, on the fiber that they, that they have in place. Uh, so the, um, um, there's a couple of, a couple of items that, that, um, that were mentioned. There's a number of things we're looking at. We will leverage all of those. Um, and, um, and again, uh, some of that requires a lot of collaboration with the private sector, and that's why the private sector this is a public-private partnership, and the private sector is in integrated with us on the operations and the research and development arm of this. Um, so we're looking at everything. There should be no impediment outside of um, the ability to use the existing systems to move the signal, and where we can't move the signal to the time frames that are meeting our need, we need to work, and we are working on, on improving that to make sure it gets out. You as the user, you'll get it on your smartphone, you'll get it on your, over your radio, you'd get it over, um, you'd get maybe an audible alert that comes in a school or in a business, uh, will, 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 will uh, alarm, um, and uh, you, it may come up immediately on highway signs. Uh, there's a whole various kinds of things that we would push out so that the public, if you're either a citizen of California or you're just visiting California, you get this information and you, and you, you know what to do. So. Well, collectively, to have a comprehensive system that we can say it's reliable, that we can roll out, uh, you know, at, from this point today, moving on, it's probably going to be about a year or so before we're at that point. We have pilot projects that are currently in place that we're building upon. Um, uh, John talked about that from BART. There's, uh, he's got the pilot program. They've been working that. There are pilot programs in Los Angeles and Long Beach. There's some in San Francisco. 
uh, we'll, we'll build on those pilot projects. Uh, we have one down in the Coachella Valley uh, uh, to accelerate the process. And then it will probably be a regional rollout based upon those, those kind of things. But the deciding factor, of course, is going to be, you know, not necessarily do we have the technology to do the sense the, the, the earthquake. Yes, we do. The, the, the challenge is making sure that we can move the signal in a way that's reliable. And then, um, uh, and, and that's really the kind of where we're at at this point. And then training the public on what do they do when they get the message. Would these alerts be localized or statewide? So for instance, if an earthquake hit in Southern California, would people in Northern California also be alerted? You know, we're working through that protocol. But the, in essence, you know, it, 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 it probably would be targeted. But when you talk about the size of earthquakes, a big earthquake may affect a large portion of the state. So I think it's going to be scalable based upon um, where uh, the earthquake is and the magnitude of that earthquake about where who gets notified. It's one of the things that we're working with the federal government on. They've got um, emergency notification systems that they're still refining uh, that, you know, you want to get it targeted, but, you know, you're focusing on L.A. and somebody in San Diego gets a warning. So, um, so we're, we're working through that process. I, there's so many fault yeah. lines in California. You want to hit that one? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we focused our, uh, our build-out efforts for seismic stations on the San Andreas. In fact, I, I was running the seismic network in Southern California at the time in 2008, and uh, our goal was to basically pepper them along the, the fault zone. So we've got a, um, a priority list of uh, problematic faults and population centers that are our first priority. And that's uh, why what gives us confidence that we'll be able to do some limited regional rollouts uh, in the short term, uh, because those areas are, are very far along. Uh, and other less populated, less hazardous areas of the state are lower priority, and they'll eventually get filled in. Where we are at with the with the timing issue? Well, I think um, you know. Let me give that a shot. I, <laughs> I have my answer, but I, yeah, oh I no, well please. No, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the, the the system uh, called Shake Alert has been uh, delivering live alerts to beta users in California since February of 2012. Uh, so, it, uh, in fact, I had to mute my phone for this press conference for fear that it would go off because of the swarm that's going on in Southern California right now. Um, so the, the system is operational in a very beta prototype sense today, but it is not sufficiently well tested, it is not robust enough, and it is, doesn't have enough stations yet for full public rollout. So this is not a notional thing. Uh, this is something we've been working on for over 10 years, uh, and we've now reached that point where it is sufficient, that, that is, the system is stable and capable enough to start to support what we're calling pilot projects. And those are real live applications like uh, BART, which was way ahead of the curve, where the upside of an effective alert is very high and the downside of a mistake is very low. So if you slow and stop a train, no big deal start it up again, move along, go on with life. But obviously there are lots of pilot possibilities in that arena, uh, and that's the stage we're at now. Okay. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, we think we have uh, enough money to roll it out now, um, and uh, we're continuing to work with um, uh, uh, other investment partners um, to ensure we have the sustainability over the long run. Uh, but um, with regards to the initial uh, uh, investment of funds, Yeah, the Napa earthquake uh, about two years ago was, I think, the first six that the system caught. And what was the time? Do you remember? I think. No, but the, the, the alert time was, it was five. Oh, so I'll let the Berkeley folks talk. <laughs> Hi, so I'm uh, Dr. Jennifer Strauss. I work at the Berkeley Seismological Laboratory, and I manage the users for Northern California. So we had a few beta testers running the system at the time of the Napa earthquake. Um, BART was notably one of them, but um, their system 
sped, spun up. They got about nine seconds of warning in the Oakland Center. And of course, it was 324 in the morning, so no trains ultimately stopped because they were all stopped anyways. Um, we had a beta test running at City of San Francisco. They got about 12 seconds warning for the earthquake, and I think um, a little bit more than that for Google down in the uh, peninsula. So it's very different timings depending on where you are in the Bay Area because the amount of time you have for the earthquake depends on how far you are from the epicenter and it is not dependent on the magnitude of the earthquake. And so when people talk about how much time do we have, we have, you know, you're saying 10 seconds now, maybe a minute depending on area. That's something that we can increase by a little bit to get this, you know, infrastructure build out. But um, using the science and technology that we're doing today, it's, that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, five years from now, that's going to go down to like two seconds. It's just the way earthquakes move and build over time. Well, I would just say we're, we're using as much technology that exists currently to be able to move the signals as we've been moving them. Um, but when we talk about pumping up the volume and the, and the, the, the amount of, of area that needs to be covered, um, you know, we need to make sure we've got the reliability in that process to get there. So what we are using, we're currently using our current communication systems. We have our partners in the telecommunications, that the telecoms that are that are working with us. Uh, we're using existing federal alert systems. Here at the Warning Center uh, and at USGS uh, and you know, the universities are sending out messages. So those are all existing uh, processes. But we, we do know that there are challenges with those, uh, those systems. And we, we really, the, really the one of the big focus is being able to, um, once we build out the sensor array, uh, so we got an adequate uh, sensor capability, is that we've got enough pipeline for moving that signal in the time frame we're doing it. So we always want to speed up the signal. The more time we get in, the, in moving the signal, the more warning time that you can get. And uh, as said earlier, closer to the epicenter, least amount of warning you get. Further from the epicenter, the, the greater amount of warning you get. So um, we, want to, we want to make that time frame as, as rapid as possible. One more question, please. Go ahead. I don't want to be no. <laughs> no, it's OK. So, Go ahead. Uh, Where, where are we at, you guys? If we had to put a number on it, it's something like 45%. We're uh, almost halfway. Yeah. We've been but doing a lot of work. That's an oversimplification of what's, uh, what's ahead. Yeah. How long will that take to get behind Good question. That's what uh, yeah. Cal OES keeps asking yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, we're pushing them. It. But th that's what we're saying. You know, we, really, a lot of this is, is managing the expectation of the public and of all of you about where we are. So, I mean, reasonably, I think that we're going to have to re require the rest of this year. To, to build out the sensor array, you know, to, to a point where we're comfortable enough that we can move that signal out. Um, but, you know, in rea reality, that's probably a, a couple of year project to be able to get us where we need to get across the, across the land. So, so 45% done, you still got another 50% or 55%. You're saying that in a year, this is going to be coming out to my cell phone. Is that realistic? I think it's some, in some limited way that is. I mean, when you look at the way the sensor array has been laid out currently, they're, they're really focusing on uh, metropolitan areas and other kinds of areas. So, you know, again, I, I started off saying one to two years. We're going to shoot for one year and, and uh, you know, uh, but really it's in that one or two year period. Um, putting a sensor in the ground isn't easy as just walking out and saying, I want to put it right there. Uh, there's a lot of science behind it. There's permitting requirements. There's there's a lot of involvement of, of, of different players that, that are involved. So all that gets needs to be adjudicated. But I'll tell you, this governance structure that the governor signed in the, in the law today is, is specifically designed to streamline all of that bureaucracy to, to enhance and make and very rapidly address that particular kind of issue. So, you know, it's going to be in the one to two year time frame before we can really say. And it has to be reliable. We don't want, we don't want a, a case where, you know, um, there's areas that aren't covered uh, um, adequately and, and that they should have got a warning, but they didn't get a warning. Uh, that's really important, so. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate it. Real quick here, the USGS has a high resolution version of that alert that we played for you. So you just go on their website, search it, you'll find it. 
Uh, also, some of these folks may be available for yep. one-on-ones after the press conference. Just ask. Thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate for being here. <laughs>